The year this year didn't start off perfectly. Um, a few mishaps, especially at Tailand Bend with the crash, the broken scapula. It wasn't looking too good after that, <laughs> um, unfortunately. We had an amazing Townsville, drew back the points that we had to Harren, who was in the lead at the moment at that point in the junior championship, and we come out on top of that. But I suppose if you take not just this year's three rounds into consideration, but Grand Prix last year and then Adelaide 500 last year, it, it's a pretty good sample size, I suppose, to show that you've got what it takes to, to earn this nomination and to go overseas and, and represent the championship in the, the junior shootout. If you were to combine last year's Grand Prix and Adelaide 500, where we had an amazing two rounds there and then a fairly decent three rounds here, being second in the championship at the moment, um, it's not a bad point score if you add them both up, which you, if you look at it that way, it's good. Yeah, it is. Any any track time is good track time in these times in which we live. Um, just run us through how and when you got the news that you'd received that nomination and what your initial reaction was. Probably about three weeks ago, I got a call from Troy Bundy. Oh, there wasn't going to be any more rounds before the nomination date. Um, and then I would be crowned the champion for the junior championship and obviously get the once in a lifetime opportunity to go over and represent uh, Porsche Creek up Australia at the shootout. So that was a overwhelming phone call. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. How have you managed yourself the last two years, Cooper, with with that fact that that this, and it's the same for everybody, I suppose, but everyone sort of lost a, a year out of their racing careers. So have you found it challenging to deal with that from a mental point of view and go, gee, I'm sitting here not doing anything when I could be over there? Or have you taken some comfort in the fact that everybody in this part of the world is in exactly the same boat? So in reality, you're at exactly the same level where you were 12 months ago. How have you approached it through this process? Last year in 2020 was definitely a struggle. Three race wins out of four races. Everything was just gelling perfectly. Um, and for that season to then be obviously cancelled, that was quite hard but I worked hard on my training throughout that year, over the break, over summer, and with the McElroy team to come back stronger and better. Well, this year, uh, we've had a bit of bad luck along the way, mm. uh, as well as some of my own mistakes uh, at Sandown, um, and then at Townsville in qualifying as well in race one, just due to not being in the car very much this past two years. Uh, it's the same boat for everyone, but obviously being in Melbourne and McElroy up in Queensland, I don't get the test much as either due to the border restrictions. So that's a bit challenging. Did what we did and we uh, got the main thing ticked off, which was that junior championship. When it comes to the, the shootout, McElroy's got a great track record with Jackson Evans and before him, Matt Campbell going over and, and doing the business. So you must be confident that you've got that knowledge base, I suppose, within the McElroy community, the family that is that that race team, will you be drawing from these guys that have been there, done that, to prepare yourself to go over? Well, the process to become the best driver possible for that shootout started when I joined McRae back in 2019. Mm. They started teaching me everything from the moment I joined them to breed me and get me prepared for whenever this opportunity may have happened. So I've been working with them ever since then and I feel I'm ready, especially after the news that got announced that I've also I'll also be racing in Curra Cup France as well for the last round of their championship. Yeah. And doing multiple test days as well over there in the new GD3 992 Cup car, which will be an amazing opportunity and it'll make sure I'm prepared as best as I can be for the opportunity that is in front of me of going to the shootout. Yeah, well, that was my next question, mate. And what a cool opportunity to get those miles before the shootout and you know you touched on the fact you haven't had much seat time here so that must be confidence inspiring to go and, and not only go and get laps but get laps in the new car so you'll get a taste of it before anyone here does which is pretty cool we started thinking about that with macro and obviously my family and the more and more we thought about it it was a no-brainer to go over there and get valuable laps in that new car considering that the other people i'll be person in the shootout i've already had a season under the belt their belt in that car it'll be very good to get a fair few laps in that car before the shootout uh, it'll give me a lot more confidence and i'm going i'll be going into the shootout knowing that i'll be prepared as i can be 
Uh, what track is the French round at? The French round will be at Portimao in Portugal. Yeah, nice. Cool. Yeah, so I've been doing a few laps there on the sim. And it's an amazing track, so I'm looking forward to that very much. I was going to ask how you've been preparing, and as we talk, you're sitting in your simulator now because it's all rigged up for, for sound and vision, which I love. Um, yeah, so obviously you've been you've been getting some miles at that track. It's a cool racetrack. It is a very cool racetrack. It's got a lot of um, elevation. I was surprised, especially on the sim, you can notice it. Mm. Um, and it's got a bit of everything. Most are fast corners, some tight hairpins. It's a proper racetrack. And in that new 992 Cup car, it's going to be uh, pretty cool. Final one from me, mate. And, and thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. And it's really exciting news for us who follow the journey of young guys and girls that come through the ranks in Porsche racing to see all that hard work pay off and, and the dedication and all the effort that goes into it. So very, very cool. You've been very consistent though, haven't you, since we first met in Cup Challenge all those years ago, that this was the pathway you've wanted to follow. You've, you've wanted that junior driver thing. And it must feel like now it's even more realistic that once you get to the shootout and you put the best foot forward, which we know you will, that following that there's a real opportunity for you to make your mark in Europe. Ever since I joined GD3 Cup Challenge in 2018 this was always the goal to be able to get this opportunity to go over there and replicate what Matt Campbell's done and it pretty much it nearly set you up for life it's yeah. everything a kid dreams for to race cars for Porsche um, be a factory driver and now that I've gotten the chance to go over and in two months and do the shootout is um, very surreal it's definitely the most important important time in my career. I've got to put all my focus into it, um, training very hard, preparing myself as best as I can. So I'm leaving nothing on the table, knowing whatever the result is that I've given my all and I can be happy with it. That's an outstanding approach, mate. And we really look forward to following the journey. Cooper Murray, thanks for joining us. Best wishes. Looking forward to following your progress over in Europe later this year and for whatever the future holds and congrats on everything you've achieved here so far. Thanks, Richard.